del autor publicado en Harvard, Business Week, TechCrunch, VentureBeat y GigaOM es Larry Young. There's a karmic energy to doing CS183E, uh, CS183E for edit. Now, when I say karmic energy, introducing this concept is in and of itself kind of controversial because you can't really touch, see, or feel karmic energy. So I'm going to put the karmic and the karma of past lives and regeneration. I'm going to tie that in to a bookended concept where we're editing. But initially, I'm just going to put the karmic part, part portion of karmic energy in parentheses. So with the, the energy of existing cadaver, because remember, CS23 edit is where we are trying to literally do CPR on a cadaver. We're trying to practice entrepreneurship on something that has passed away, that has been left for dead, that founders have just given up hope on. So there's energy, and whether it's karmic, and if that causes an emotional response, set that aside, and then we're going to go over different uh, other pieces of energy, which is feng shui energy, which is also touchy-feely, but we're going to go into something very uh, hard and specific that at one point used to be doubted also, gravitational energy. Yes, gravitational energy used to be doubted. There used to not be a compression algorithm that would correlate the gravitational pull between two celestial bodies. Your body and mine are gravitationally pulled together. So I'm not even joking. There is actually a formula for gravity before gravity had to be discovered. So let's use these energies into this lecture, CS 183 E edit, lecture number eight, uh, parentheses, karma, energy, karmic energy. Feng Shui energy, Feng Shui, Feng like wind. <sighs> feng is Chinese. For those of you that uh, are white or Mexican, Feng is wind, Shui is, I think, water. I'm not sure, some Chinese person taught me, I think I forgot. Feng Shui is wind, water, energy. Feng Shui energy. It applies to interior design and architecture and picking out the best cubicle to work at in your office. Feng Shui energy. Why am I bringing this up for CS183E lecture number eight under karmic energy? I'm bringing this up because when the conference that the founders did not promote at has a feng shui energy to it. So McCormick Place, uh, Internet Retailers of America, Fresh Plum slash NYC company. Kind of slow to go to random conference in the Midwest, which is where a lot of the money transacts. And if you start a company in Mountain View or Palo Alto, you've got a Palo Alto Stanford bubble. You've got a Mountain View bubble. Uh, Case in point is the Google April Fool's joke, which really wasn't that funny with the minion with the mic drop. There's a bubble that the original founders did not ever leave. So the feng shui of it, you like how I tied and brand activated that, don't you? So the feng shui of it is you actually are going to go out into the consumers and get that distribution by realizing that there's a feng shui around McCormick Place or there's a feng shui around uh, names, North American Manufacturing Excellence Summit. There's a feng shui about South by Southwest, SXSW. There's a feng shui about Sundance Film Festival, uh, the bottom of the lift, uh, Lodge at the Lift, Sky Lodge. I mean, those are all great feng shui spots. So we're gonna use energy de la feng shui to do this. We are going to resuscitate that cadaver by positioning ourselves and our limited resources by leveraging feng shui, which is going to be a sequence of uh, videos and that are gonna follow, think of it as a series of segments, that are gonna follow this segment as part of CS183 lecture, CS183E lecture eight. The most specific form of feng shui energy uh, will be related to gravitational energy. Now you want to grab a pen because wherever the conference is at, 
ground zero for the conference, whether it be the Westin at Times Square, if you're doing a New York Fashion Week event or a private equity event, the Westin at Times Square is a great location for that conference. So that would be ground zero. So the feng shui of it is by realizing, hey, Shula's is right there on the, the, the initial mezzanine floor, whereas floors two, three, and four are all the meeting room space. So if ground zero is at X location, we wanna be at X plus one on the GPS. And the way that we're gonna hammer out and walk this through, and it's gonna get complicated in a hurry, and right now it's menial and seemingly common sense, is that we want to position ourselves and our limited resources uh, near the hotel bar. So the gravitational energy of bodies goes along the lines of the initial body that we want to uh, orbit around would be the initial conference. So ground zero of the conference, the epicenter of the conference. So if you're talking about uh, Super Bowl, this works for anything in the real world. So the Super Bowl in Houston, they have a ground zero, which is Fan Fest in Radio Row. Or if you're talking about New York Fashion Week, the epicenter uh, would be Lincoln Center. Or now it's a mishmash, which is why the franchise has kind of dropped off a little bit. But Sundance Film Festival, there's always South by Southwest, there's always an epicenter. And you want to be really, really, really close to the epicenter. You want to sleep at the epicenter. You want to live at the epicenter. And you want to do a pop-up 11-minute party at the epicenter where all the other celestial bodies. And in the next segment, I'm going to go over specifics on this gravitational that dovetails karmic energy, that dovetails feng shui energy into something incredibly specific called anchor plus satellite. I'm super excited to explain to you anchor plus satellite because... There's a dual track. One is Anchor Plus Satellite in the real world, and the other one is Anchor Plus Satellite in the online world. To briefly go over Anchor Plus Satellite in the real world, the Anchor is the conference that you're aiming to get distribution at. Satellite is you and your effort to value addedly hijack. Now, when I say the phrase value addedly hijack, if you're from a country that rapes and pillages neighbors, I'm not talking about hijacking a plane. I'm talking about a value-added augmentation. I'm talking about adding to the conversation of mobile apps unlocked, which is an upcoming conference, May 4 and 5. Brand activating and knowledge activating a fresh new conference while also helping your own effort. That's a satellite effort in the real world that augments the anchor. What you're gonna be doing in the online world is you're going to be doing blog posts and satellite things that point towards the anchor. So you're gonna offer inbound links uh, from the Eventbrite 11 minute event to the initial mobile apps unlocked event, which staying with the previous example uh, would take place May 4th and 5th. So your satellite event online would be April, let's say 26th at the Claremont Hotel. That's actually a real event. I'm using real examples. I'm trying to get as specific as possible so that way you guys don't complain, oh, I, these seem like just general ideas. April 26th, mobile apps unlocked, networking party in the Bay Area before May 4th and May 5th in Las Vegas. So the theory behind it is that the producers are so stressed about filling seats for Las Vegas that they forget to do Bay Area networking events. They forget to do uh, Austin, Texas networking events, Chicago networking events, or New York networking events. So it's up to the users who want to augment and satellite the Anchor event, completely optional. And if you're an anchor like I am, you don't complain that satellite people are augmenting the conversation because that's augmenting and brand activating and knowledge activating mobile apps unlocked. If you want to write that down and Google it, you'll see the anchor plus the satellite things. Just like CS183 is a satellite to CS183C is in Charlie. 
as a anchor to as a satellite to Freudian slip CS-183B or CS-183 regular. CS-183E is a satellite event that augments the initial franchise CS-183. So doing satellite events requires you to realize where Ground Zero is. So we're gonna actually get out and use Google Maps. We're actually gonna use Google Maps for uh, mobile apps unlocked. In fact, I haven't done this yet because I've only done the planning stage for April 26th event for the Claremont Hotel, April 26th before May 4th and 5th for mobile apps unlocked. So you're gonna get up online and go to Google Maps and you're gonna find out where the epicenter is taking place for mobile apps unlocked. So I'll wait and while you're watching this video, you wanna simultaneously execute and tweet at me, oh, hey, I'm watching CS-23E Lecture 8 and it seems like mobile apps unlocked is at this stage. So you wanna text me or email and interact with me the location of mobile apps unlocked in Las Vegas on May 4th and 5th. So you go to Google Maps and you actually wanna to go to street view in addition to satellite view because you wanna host an event literally on the premises if possible. Now there are certain conferences that try to buy out the entire town. Most of, the case, most of the time, that is not the case. And even in a town that has a full monopoly, even for a conference that has a full monopoly on the town, there are always dissenters, people that run venues that aren't going to allow for the monopoly to happen. And this isn't antitrust, this is just something that happens as a dynamic, is that you wanna be a value-added portion of the satellite. That's why it's critical to use Google Maps. Now, big mistakes are these. You wanna save money, right, by trying to mooch a pass, and then you'll end up staying with a friend in Austin, Texas, or New York, or Park City, or Las Vegas. Hopefully you won't have a friend in Las Vegas that's living on the Strip. You want to actually want to live at the epicenter. So if it's at the Westin uh, at Times Square, you actually want to sleep there. The reason for that is that the number of loose connections and random people that you meet for breakfast is going to be a large portion of your ROI. So it's a huge mistake to try to stay with a friend or even Airbnb five miles away because you will lose that, that edge of actually hot tubbing with people. I'm not even making this up. The Weston Copley, okay? The best networking was in the hot tub uh, at Copley, at the Weston for NBCA, new, uh, the National Venture Capital Association's event. I know, hot tub networking does work. But if that's a little aggressive for you or you're worried about uh, taking off your shirt, by the way, Aaron Patcher is my shirtless mentor, super smart. As soon as it hits 55 degrees, has a half a reason, bam, shirt off, gets distribution. Have you heard of Mint? Do you realize how Mint started? Aaron Patcher, shirt off. Hotel bar. So if you want to not take your shirt off, and you want to try to not network in hot tubs, the hotel bar is a slam dunk winner. You don't have to drink. You don't even have to buy people drinks. You just need to hang around the hotel bar, and this is how you do it. This is how to network at a conference where the epicenter of the epicenter is the hotel bar. So the way a conference works is there's two or three levels of events. They're splattered all over the place. They're at the let's stay with the Westin. So there's two floors and the events go nine o'clock to four, five, or six o'clock. Now, around eight, nine, ten o'clock, people kind of don't want to go home and go to bed and they kind of want to hang out. Where do they do that? The hotel bar. You want to squat a table, uh, an elevated table where you're not allowed to sit and you want to squat that kind of table and Maybe bring balloons, maybe bring flowers. You're gonna feel like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? But the reaction of executives when you bring balloons is always positive. I've never seen an exec say, oh, I hate balloons, get out of here. 
They're always like, oh, you brought balloons. I saw you earlier today. So balloons signify and signal and indicate that you are open to people approaching you because you're holding two balloons. Now I know it takes a lot of confidence and this is almost a, a sequel topic of how to show up with a bunch of confidence for doing networking with balloons. But a hotel bar, this is how you do it. You don't have to order alcohol for everybody. You can just milk a tonic or a cranberry soda, okay, non-alcoholic. But what you want to do is you want to bring a bunch of $5 bills. If you're foreign, it's the one with Abraham Lincoln. He freed a bunch of us uh, during the Civil War. So you want to bring a bunch of Abraham Lincoln and you want to tip the bartenders because you will be asking for the smallest of favors. Uh, coat check, bag check, uh, just helping people not be saddled and straddled with their junk because when you go to these conferences you become like this pack mule and there will be chief technology officers okay will look like a pack mule and a pack mule is where you bring a small horse that made it with a donkey and you just straddle it with a bunch of backpacks so these pack mules so then you want to try to host them in your little hotel bar thing now, typically you're going to look like a kid and you're going to be your co-founder is going to be another kid and that's why we're practicing doing startups no execs going to be like oh thank you for taking care of my backpack and help having find the bellhop okay now buy me you know a mckellen 18 which is like a 45 dollars shot they're not going to do that they're going to be like oh thank you so much because the person will give you a claim check They'll give you a claim check. I don't have any on me. This is similar. So they'll give you a claim check for the backpack and the executive will be so thankful that you relieved him of pack mule duties. Uh, that's an, uh, an effort to host while you're at the hotel bar that you are not buying people drinks on. So you're trying to add value and you're trying to give people a reason to hang out with you while you pitch whatever you're trying to cadaver and bring back, do CPR from the dead on. Some of these things are incredibly difficult for an Ivy League person to do because they don't wanna host. They wanna be discovered. They don't wanna uh, do uh, social, be the social lubricant, they feel as if they should just show up and just be the VIP. Guess what? Most VIPs in this world are hosts. And the guests who show up wanting to just be VIPs, they don't get any distribution. And that is at exactly the heart of the matter. They think that going home and just working on their product 24-7, they don't have to get out there and promote it. That's why we're editing this dead cadaver and that's why we're having to do these seemingly menial tasks of working the hotel bar like a floor whore, like a prostitute, that we're not exchanging sexual favors for money. We are exchanging hosting and lubrication and showing people our badge uh, in exchange for a little bit of attention in what is it we are trying to pitch, aka mentor people on. The whole lecture is the karmic energy and we're trying to do reincarnation. Now I know that this word is uh, emotional because I don't think we go around this world more than once. I think we got one shot at it. Reincarnation is the, the rising, the Easter egg, the resuscitation of this cadaver, of this dead startup that other people had previously given up on. So the reincarnation energy is really just going back to the roots of what CS183E is to do, which is to help us practice on a cadaver, help us realize that when we practice promoting this startup that we ourselves did not start, we are helping in the karmic sense of the word, the initial founders who were left for dead or left this company for dead. So 
the karmic energy of, hey, hey, I've spent some time working on it. Would you like a portion of your dead cadaver back at this higher value is something that's karmically good, where we are not just trying to make a name for ourselves or pat our Stack Overflow, GitHub, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, WordPress, Wall Street Journal press mentions. We're also trying to karmically help. And that's the reincarnation portion of it, where, where we are trying to literally resuscitate this startup that has been left for dead. If your event doesn't get covered by the Wall Street Journal, did it ever happen? I say that tongue in cheek, but I question that. So let's say the Wall Street Journal doesn't cover you. And let's say that you still want to to be able to document some of these positive works of this karmic energy. We're going to go back to an old formula that you've written down time and time again. Maybe this will remind you and reiterate EUTWM PPM. EUTWM PPM. Engineer up a tidal wave of momentum, perpetual promotion machine. This makes my dog fall asleep. Look at him. Brady! Brady! Does EUTWM PPM make you fall asleep? Oh, Brady. Pretty good boy. Brady, such a good boy. So you do EUTWM PPM, engineer up a tidal wave of momentum, perpetual promotion machine. Why? Because we're going to be the ones who are documenting on WordPress our small wins. We're going to be documenting on Twitter the people that shout us out. And then we're going to embed those tweets using WordPress email publish post. It's the easiest thing in the world to embed a tweet. Most people don't do it. That's what engineering up a tidal wave momentum perpetual promotion machine does is when an executive says something, oh, hey, really smart to hijack the hotel bar and then do a slide share presentation in the meeting room right next door where three people come to your slide share prezo. But guess what? They're super happy to get that mentorship and they actually kind of want to get off their feet a little bit and there's free hotel bar food and Raphael and Jorge, you tip them out. So they're actually bringing food into your meeting room and that they unlock because nobody uses meeting rooms at 10 o'clock at night. EUTWM PPM, doing a YouTube video. So that formula is all under hashtag, hashtag EUTWM PPM, hashtag EUTWM PPM. Hopefully some of these things are karmically going to help you and will be uh, repaid back to you by some mentee or mentor of yours saying, oh, hey, thanks for the shout out. Uh, such good karma.